tutorial starts with a song, <laughs> but it's only a few seconds long. <laughs> Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, we have 2D programs and we have 3D programs. Maya obviously is a 3D program, Photoshop, Illustrator are 2D programs, well, lots, lots of others. And they have their purposes, for example, to have a photograph of a person and overlay it with uh, an object is uh, one click in Photoshop but very hard to do in 3D, very hard because you need a 3D model of that person and this is much harder to get than a photograph and many other things and uh, illustrations of uh, simple objects uh, are always interesting to do but uh, sometimes and actually we have bridges between 2D and 3D packages for example Photoshop has a 3D module basically because of the 360 degree photography which we have these days but um, uh, we have options and possibilities uh, in Maya Blender Cinema 4D, uh, Max, etc., which can help the illustration, uh, well, get much in more interesting and much more flexible, uh, mainly because of the lighting. Let's try something like that. I create some cutlery. And for that purpose, I go to the top window. And uh, I want to see the grid, and not necessarily, but uh, yeah. Uh, when I double click this icon here, you see all these tabs here, you need the curves and surfaces, this icon, you double click it and the, when I reset it, uh, it's set to 3 cubic. Uh, I want to use it as linear, that means I have sharp edges without uh, much effort, uh, but only sharp edges. I could use degree 2 as well, but uh, you do this uh, as you want. So let me start with a knife. I press um, well, I click here and there, and this is going to be the back of my knife, and now I go forward, and uh, in order to close this curve, uh, I press and hold the key C, and close to this, with a, with a cursor close to this part, and I snap it to the very beginning, so this is my knife. Uh, I repeat the last command, and create a fork in the same way basically one two three and then we go back here and with the key C I snap it so it's um, back to the beginning of that curve and the last one of course is a spoon and very easy here I guess I need a few more points. I could have chosen the other topology of that curve, a NURBS curve for example, but uh, I stick to this simple curve because it's an abstract illustration which we're going to create. Now I don't need the grid anymore and uh, I can do this now. Uh, either I go to surfaces and create a planner, a planner surface from that. But um, I select all three of them and this creates a single planner surface from all of them. In the NURBS world, and this is a NURBS surface now, uh, it is not really a surface of that shape. It's a square. Now I did a 12 part course on Udemy and Skillshare which you might check out because uh, there I go into details about trimming and uh, all these kind of topologies and surfaces. Now we have a planar surface and I want to get rid of that history. Delete by type history. Why is that? Because uh, I want to have the curves not be controlling the surface anymore. So I can hide the curves now. I keep them just hide them because I might actually use them later to modify or create new surfaces with uh, with similar curves. I can modify the curves etc. Now uh, when I select that trimmed surface let me say it's three surfaces but it's actually um, one uh, and now I press the key W you see it, the 
translate uh, arrows are in the center. I want to move them over here and I press the key insert that moves the pivot. And I move the pivot over here and press insert again. That means I can rotate it around that point now. That's what I want to do. Um, I duplicate this and I go to the, in the attribute editor and now I rotate it by 30 degrees and I move it a little bit up like this and now I, I use shift D I did a whole tutorial about this magic key keyboard combination a shortcut control D and uh, I get this wonderful layout why 30 now you see why i chose 30 because uh, uh this uh, fits nicely with 360 degrees so we have uh, quite a few surfaces you would have guessed 12 and um, for illustration purf purposes it's very nice to have an illumination and uh, the illumination in 3d is so easy and so flexible let's create um, a sky dome light first and I don't want to see the sky dome light here in the the representation in the viewport. That's why I uncheck uh, it. Uh, but uh, in rendering, we see it. I render in the viewport, and this is what the light does. It gives me a white background, which doesn't really matter. And if I'm satisfied with this view already, I can now render it. And um, when I render it with Arnold. Uh, I can try to see the alpha channel and it's not there because we have the light in the background working in the background now um, this light is not very interesting anyway so uh, let me delete the sky dome light but uh, in many purposes it just works just fine and create an area light and the area light is not visible here because we unchecked the lights here and I want to keep it like this and rather go to the um, well for example the perspective view where I have my cutlery all sitting here this is my light and uh, since the scene is quite big I can scale it up quite a bit and move it up like this this looks good and I go back to my view here and render it with the Arnold and I don't see anything because I need to uncheck normalize and now it looks really it gets getting interesting and the exposure when I raise this gets very interesting um, now when I go to this tab which is uh, invoking the render settings I can choose the image format and EXR is ideal for this for compositing later for 3D putting a 3D image like ours into a different environment in a 2D environment basically and I want the alpha channel which is just fine and now I render it this means the alpha channel is working and when I save this I can apply it to uh, well a tablecloth for example <laughs> Now, another advantage of this very simple way of modeling the cutlery is that, uh, and invoking a light, is that I can apply a texture. And uh, for that reason, I go to the, actually I select all surfaces and right mouse click, new material, Arnold, and I create an Arnold standard surface shader. and. Uh, here I see the presets and I choose one of the presets uh, you don't see this all right because it's out of the recording area but I choose copper and not replace but blend by 50% now I go to the geometry tab and I click on bump mapping and here I go to Arnold texture 
and I choose the AI noise. I do this quite quickly because I did a tutorial about the wonderful AI noise uh, shader and uh, I need the out color here for example red and go into the bump value and now you see that bump working. working. And when we get closer it uh, doesn't look really good and uh, the reason is that we need well we need to do something about it. When we uh, raise the octaves it's getting more interesting the di distortion gets more interesting we need more light now. Let us raise the exposure like this and I go back to that shader here and I need to go back to the AI noise and uh, I can lower the amplitude like this. Uh, it's getting more and more interesting you see. Lower the amplitude even further and now comes an interesting thing the scale and when I reduce the scale in this axis I get uh, a pattern in this direction and when I do the same thing here now I go back to the color and I want the specularity to be not that drastic the roughness a little bit higher and here in the color actually I can go to well for example this kind of color So this is my 2D cutlery in 3D. When I create such things and I do this quite a lot just to for my own pleasure then I apply it in different environments and uh, choose rendering angles, other cameras etc. And I'll show you some of them. Have a nice day. Bye bye.